We got a basketball problem in this country. Yep. Men and women. WNBA and the N-word. NBA. Oh, y'all don't believe me? And, and people are really tuned into our game and what we can do because the product has always been great. It's just that we haven't had people really pushing it in the right ways, first of all. And we haven't had people, you know, watching it to the levels that, that it deserves to be watched and viewed. So it's growing. Um, for me, financially, I feel like it's good. Mm. It could be better. Um, I think, you know, doing interviews and sitting with you guys really helps a lot to, to you know, get it where it needs to be. But um, obviously, I still play overseas um, and I still make way more money overseas than I do um, in the WNBA or with my marketing. If that was combined, I still, wait, I still make way more money. Um, so uh, what I want it to be, even if it's not for me, I, it would be cool if it was for me. But like when I leave the league, I want, I want players to be able to, to not have to go overseas and be able to make that type of money here, you know, in the U.S. with their families and loved ones. So mm, we just getting started. We all know how popular the game is. A lot of conversation with the men's game. People not liking the product. People not liking the game, the style. All they do is try to shoot threes or layups. No mid-range. <laughs> no post-up game. What the stars at that compete? Why they ain't beefing? <laughs> all that stuff, right? Women's game. Man, it look like a junior high school game. They ain't dunking. Everybody talk about how pure it is. Pure garbage. <laughs> we hear it all, don't we? Don't we? Changed. We've seen a surge in popularity with the WNBA, who did their media rights deal with you in partnership with the NBA. In hindsight, given the unbelievable surge in ratings and attention, uh, was that a mistake? Should they have done their rights deal separately? Mm. Well, first of all, we are all one integrated business. So, you know, when you say they, they yes, is us. Right yeah, it's, 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 we're all one organization. Sure, I guess I, the I, question is, should we collectively have gone out and had separate discussions correct. around the WNBA? I would say, in essence, we did. I and mean, we're always testing the market. I mean, to say the market may be in a different place than it was at the time we were negotiating, we'll see. There's still additional WNBA deals that we're going to do. So we'll see whether the marketplace WNBA. suggests there's different valuations than the one we did. I would say, in the aggregate, with the deals we already did, plus the deals that the WNBA now um, is going to do, the remaining packages, you're looking at roughly a six times increase from the current rights fees. Um, could we have done even better than that? I'm not sure. Again, we'll see. There's also resets yeah. that I think you're aware of built After into the existing years, deals yeah. so that I think both sides knew going into these would see whether, you know, these negotiations began long before the season. So we hadn't experienced this season's ratings yet, but there had been upticks along the way with the WNBA. Upticks. And I think there was a, a acknowledgement from both sides that to the extent that we the market was better or different than we were predicting, both sides agreed they'd sit down in good faith and make adjustments. By the way, because the expansion mm -hmm. issue is front and center in the WNBA as well. Yep. We and then, so you have to determine um, even use WNBA, for example, where there's enormous interest in expansion franchises right now. How much talent is there to go around in the near term? I mean, there's a lot of girls and young women playing basketball. So yes, there are. We just played a seven-year-old girl, and she gave us business. We end up winning, but boy, business. No question. It's going to grow over the years. There was a recent story in the New York Post to, talking about your WNBA sort of evaluations where it out. seemed to say that there was a certain group of owners that were expressing frustration with you that the WNBA teams were not worth more than they are now, in part because of the way how much control is owned by the league. Was that story correct? Are you working with owners to try to address that issue? Yeah, I, I, there was a lot of different points in that story, so it's hard yeah. to say correct or not correct. <laughs> I would just say, the just answer is, yes, we're yeah. working with WNBA owners, WNBA owners that also own NBA teams, and then more broadly, the NBA owners on what the right valuation of WNBA teams are going forward, what the best way is to operate that league. It's very integrated now with yeah. the NBA. There's aspects over time under Commissioner Engelbert's direction where they're still fairly integrated. They share the same office space with the NBA, yeah, but yeah. under her direction, we've added some um, separate or departments, like for example, where they're doing their own marketing right now, they have their own basketball operations department. So it's it's a balance of things, but I'd say we're collectively looking at all those issues, figuring out the right way to operate going forward. Changed. Okay, now, I like how much talent that. is there? I like all that. Mm hmm. Keep saying integrated. You waking my people up. <laughs> what the hell? Oh man, what is the issue going on here? What's y'all problem with the the sport of basketball in this country? What is the issue? Huh? NBA viewership numbers highlight fans' frustration. What's y'all problem? Look at this. Despite the NBA season starting off this year, you can announce that there was a decrease in viewership. Mm -mm -mm. Look at this. Damn shame. Critics out there saying it's just most people aren't watching on trackable services because they are trash. What do they think was going to happen when they dilute the game, having superstars rest and hurts the game? 
It has nothing to do with the announcing. The product is awful. No defense, no mid-range, no post-ups. Everything is driving dish, and two-thirds of the teams have no shot at winning. We'll see the same team, 10 teams on TV all year. Plus, they pay the guys too much. Who cares? The product sucks. It's not hard to figure out why. Mm, mm, mm. Let's go back to these viewership numbers. Let's get a little more detail into it, shall we? Not that. Significant drop in viewership. It all began when the Celtics playing the Knicks. Watch these numbers. Y'all ready? Forget these ads. LeBron can't believe it. Only the TNT's opening night doubleheader viewership was good. You saw a 42% decline from ESPN's first two games last year. 42%? You put the Suns and Clippers on. I was there, so I couldn't watch it. I was watching it in person. 49% drop. I could keep boring y'all with the numbers. 29% drop, et cetera. So let's sit back and chill. Let's talk. You and I. Like Rick James said, you and I. Is basketball really suffering in this country? We hear about the AAU and the corruption and the, and the issues going on with that. How the shoe companies infiltrated that and has now made it a commodity. Not really a farm system because it's not really cultivating young talent. Just taking advantage of it at a younger age. We all look at the European game and a lot of people – Look at it in reverence and respect because of how they develop those players. Let's just call it like it is. We look at those players and say, man, they're not as talented as us, but they turn out to be as good, if not better, players. We look at a Giannis, look at a Greek freak, look at MB, look at Luca. We keep going. <laughs> Dudes out there eating, Jokic, we all know. What is going on in our country in the game of basketball? Well, I think the game of basketball here, my observation is, is so talent-based that we're really hyper-focused on the body type, the measurables, who qualifies, and whose game is just off the charts. Then we focus on that kid so much, protect that kid so much, that that kid doesn't get involved and some of the basic fundamental training necessary to continue your growth, right? Basically, I'm saying you show up day one and everybody like you special, they treat you specially <laughs> in a special way. Where we know to build up skill and fundamental, you almost have to suffer. You don't believe me? Little Johnny that can't run builds up his fundamentals. Little Johnny that can't jump builds up his skills and his fundamentals. Little Johnny that can jump is just going to use that jumping ability and talent as long as you let him. This is why these coaches, when they finally get their hands on them, the revered coaches, the coaches who truly are respected, and a lot of times it happens in college. They get humbled. Those talented players got to get humbled. They got to absorb themselves into the team concept. They got to all of a sudden fit in. They got to suppress themselves to fit in. You're going to pass this around five wides 18 times. That shot clock going to narrow down. You see it in the collegiate game. All the way back, you see guys – the greatest of all time, y'all say, Jordan was lesser of a player in college than he was in the pros. You can say he was blossoming, whatever you want to call it. We have seen number one talents go to collegiate programs and all of a sudden, duck, it's time to fit in. And I think right now, our cultivation system is not a professional young league, right? It's not the same as it is in Euro. They don't grab them 12-year-olds and say, you, come here, go to school for basketball. There are some hybrids out there. I know one out here, Heritage Academy. Yep, in Atlanta, we all know. But it's not a young professional league. So, therefore, you're just getting young guns that don't know how to aim properly. And then those around them get so captivated by how lucrative it is, whether it's how young and how much 
talent they have, and you get seduced by that. Then you get seduced by all they attract in the shoe companies and the attention and the NIL. Who are you to tell them they need to work on something? And you working for them. You working with them. And that's where the game is right now. Ain't it crazy? So we do have a basketball issue out here. We got a basketball problem in our country. Women and men's. Women can't get paid. All this love and attention. And people are like, just wait. It's coming. I will say this. The talent for the WNBA is not even close to where it's going to end up. I wasn't joking when I said I saw a seven-year-old girl this weekend giving nine, ten-year-old boys business. That's good to see. Hog. Little hog dog. I told you about the eighth grader I saw back east. Never seen an eighth grader that good in my life. Everybody could talk about was it Alicia Sanchez. Is that her name? Uh, I think she's out of Atlanta. I'm talking about Juju. They got Juju too at USC. We see it. But are we going to see the money? We're going to monetize that. Adam Silver says, be patient. Adam Silver says, there's more to come. I want to believe you, but I want to see it to believe it. So we'll see. Beat it up in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about the basketball issues in our country. What is the problem? Why is viewership going down? I mean, I've been to all the games at the Clippers except one, Halloween, had to trick or treat. I don't think any of them been sold out like sold out. I, I mean, they might have been sold out in tickets, but they ain't sold out in seats. <laughs> Cats don't show up. And y'all not watching either? Oh, we got a basketball problem. Make sure you log on to projecttransition.org. Help these itty-bitties right here so they don't have to play the suffering game of basketball. Let me stop. Them suckers going to be making $100 million in about two years. Help educate and empower the itty-bitties out there and make sure that they know that they have to be greater than their greatest excuse. You guys support us in that process. Show them different pathways to success. And we'll always acknowledge you. Like Khalil Brown, who made a one-time $250 donation supporting Project, Project Transition. Happy to help the cause going to the youth. This is going to be a successful event, he says. Yes, we have a lot of events for the kids. Uh, we have pickleball tournaments, flag football camps, educational empowerment series, all kind of things to make sure that the kids know that they're properly supported and inspired. So make sure that they're greater than their greatest excuse. Love for you guys. Have a great day. Go beat it up in them comments. Go get that thing. What's up, y'all? It's Marcellus Wiley, founder of Project Transition and proud gym member. I'm excited to share with you an opportunity that will support our kids on their mission to making their dreams a reality. At Project Transition, we believe that real change comes from consistent action and support. That's why we invite you to join our powerful gym membership program that is making a difference every single day. As a gym partner, by giving every month, you'll fuel our mission by providing monthly support that turns into real empowerment and education for underserved youth. Your commitment reduces school dropouts, nurtures communities, and funds impactful programs like the Rising Stars Academy that we share. Together, we can turn potential into prosperity. Join the group of community champions driving change. Your contributions will help aid success by providing essential educational resources, building critical life skills, and fostering community strength. There's no better feeling than knowing your support will ignite hope, foster dreams, and empower the next generation. Join us today and be a part of transformative change. Help our youth become greater than their greatest excuse. Become a gym partner. Thank you.